Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sunday. Church, it's so great that you're here and at home, wherever you may be, attending the service. We're going to start right now with our opening chant, The Light of God. delighted that you've joined us in person. <laughs> We're so delighted that you've joined us <laughs> in person. <laughs> and also welcome to all who have joined us this morning via Facebook Live or Zoom. Uh, for those of you who are here in person, if you could just please be sure that your cell phones are silenced. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. So, let's join together in prayer. Just closing our eyes and turning within and recognizing that part of us that every moment just seeks to experience well-being in every way possible and to recognize that as the impulse of God, the one life, the one infinite goodness that is forever impelling itself into creation and always seeking that ever greater experience and expression of its nature throughout creation, including through and as each and every one of us. We are all emanations of the life of God. And I know that as we come together this morning with the intention to have that greater sense of our connection with God, that intention is fulfilled, that God's love flows through every part of this service. We feel it as that sense of coming together as a community. It flows through all of those who volunteer their time and talents this morning. I absolutely know that it unfolds through our musicians, Sam, Karen, and our soloist, Kevin, this morning. And I know that we hear the perfect word of the divine through Dr. Mark that his message this morning uplifts us, inspires us, reminds us of that infinite goodness that lies within us, and that we leave here with a greater sense of that and experience and express it more fully in our lives. And so how grateful I am for all the blessings I know that we receive during our time together. And in gratitude, I release this word into the law of mind, knowing it is already done in God. And so it is, and together we say, Amen. Amen.
So now please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so please remain standing as we join together in our congregational hymn, Joy and Peace in My Heart. Please be seated. Okay, so we're going to meditate for the next five minutes. So I invite you to just get still in your chairs to close your eyes and to silently repeat the mantra, God's the love that I am. If you find your mind wandering, just bring it back to silently repeating God's the love that I am. And I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
my mask off. Good morning. Thank you for being with us today. I'm happy if you're with us in person, of course, and if you are Zooming or virtualing or anything like that, that is also wonderful. We're glad you're part of our community. So we are in our Journey of the Heart program, which is our, our pledge program. We ask people during this month to think about the place the church has in your life, the importance it has, and to prayerfully decide what you're gonna give us in the year ahead financially, because that allows us to come up with a plan for what we're gonna do in the year ahead. So during this month, uh, we have uh, people from our congregation come up and share with us what the church means to them and why they support us and what we're up to. So if you would welcome with me now, Patrick Killian White and Harrison Killian White and their beautiful daughter, Sadie. Welcome them with me, yeah. into why we tithe. Okay, whatever. Take your mask off. Oh, there you go. Look. There you go. Sorry, not used to being in public. <laughs> in a place where you can take your mask off. Um, so, grateful to be here. And we, uh, leads us to, we tithe out of gratitude. And not just for what we have, but for what is there for us. Because we know that everything that we get is already there. So, we tithe in gratitude and in the opportunity to make ours ours. It's not always easy to see the benefit of tithing, especially in a rough year like we've had with irregular work and pandemic and social distancing and my God, you make me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we tithe. And I'm gonna turn this over to him now because he's more organized than I am. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Wow, I can't tell you how thrilling it is to be here and I'm really trying very hard not to burst into tears from joy because it's so wonderful to be home. Miss you guys so much. Um, and it brings me to this point, family. And that's what you guys have become for us, family, this church, um, coming to find a church home where we, um, where we feel like we fit in and we can grow. I know, particularly that I have grown this past year. We, um, we finally got to adopt our baby. She's ours now with our name. Um, that's one of the wonderful things that happened in the pandemic. And one of the other things I got to really grow in with my husband is gratitude, which is what he was speaking about earlier, gratitude for everything. I just was in an acting competitions. I don't do acting competitions. I'm too old for acting competitions. <laughs> I found myself in an acting competition without trying to be in an acting competition. Um, and it went all the way to the, I, I, they looked all over the United States and it got down to five finalists. I was one of the five. Uh, I cannot tell you the outcome because it won't be announced until November the 15th. But I will tell you the night before, um, I woke up in the middle of the night with a scratch in my cornea. I couldn't see and I told my husband, I don't think I can do this. I don't think I can do the competition. I don't think I can, I, I don't think I can see my way through to this. And he said, you can't come this far and give up. You're doing it. If you have to wear a patch on your eye and your nose is runny, you're doing this competition. What I did was start listing the gratitudes. I started listing the gratitudes, even the gratitude for scratching my cornea, which I didn't try to do. I started listing what that benefit is. What's the benefit? What's on the other side? How do I get the glory? How do I see God's glory in this? What do I and I listed those things, and I ended up spending the evening in uh, the early mornings in the urgent care, thinking I was going to have to wear an eye patch to this competition. Ended up not having to wear an eye patch. Ended up having to drive to get the medication. But all of this to say, I listed those gratitudes, and then I watched the whole situation flip. 
My husband said the last time we spoke that you give tithes to the place where you feel that you benefit, you get benefits, you grow. And that's why this church is important to us. That's why we tithe here because we grow. I know I am so much taller than I was than when I first walked into those doors. And I'm so grateful that now I'm at a space where when things bad are happening, I can list the gratitudes and then watch them change. So this is why we tithe. This is why we particularly love this church because I've watched my husband and I completely grow. And we love it here. And uh, if you're here, you know, tithing is not a huge thing. We grow. I mean, I, I, I hold on too. We all want to hold on because there's a fear about not having enough. But gosh, there's so much more on the other side. And all you have to do is just sort of walk into the light and trust and have faith. And faith is everything. So good to see you. Happy to be home. Love you so much. I really do. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Oh my God. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, sir. Uh, so in your program, there was a, a little pledge card. And if you have not filled one of these out, we would love for you to do that. Um, take it home. Pray about it. God, what should I give to the church? You can always give more. Um, and if you fill out a pledge card, we happen actually have a little gift for you. So if you give us the pledge card, um, somebody will run in the office and get you the gift. Um, that's enough about that. I thank you so much. Now, just a moment. What else was I going to say today? <sighs> you know, God, I've, I have seen again and again, and I have certainly felt this way, that after what I'm calling after COVID. Isn't it interesting there was life before COVID, life during COVID, and life what we're calling after COVID? Um, I like to think of it as being after. Um, people have been a little lost. I know I have again and again. Um, and I wonder what this led me to think about is I wonder if you've ever been really fed up and then actually got to the point where you made a change. I, hmm, you know, you have, how, but how bad did it have to get for me to make a change? And if I look honestly, I think again and again and again, it's had to get really bad over my life. It had to get really bad, like epically bad, ridiculously bad, comically bad. I can't believe it couldn't get any worse, and it does bad. And I think, you know, it's time to make a change. Now, what I realize is that in, in, as consciousness grows, it doesn't have to get to such extreme examples to get my attention. I'm willing to make a change as soon as I start to detect, like, oh, this is not really that comfortable, or this is maybe not in my highest and greatest good. I don't know about you, but I don't want to settle for less in what I can be, in what I can do, and what I can experience in life. And I believe in the science of mind that we take and use all of the experiences of our life, the good ones, the not so good ones, um, and we use all of that to find greater meaning. I wonder if you, like me, have ever settled, because gosh, I have settled. You know, I think I was afraid of disappointment. That was why I settled. Or um, I didn't want to say what I really wanted. That was another reason why I settled. Or I would tell myself something like, well, I, I could be happy with just this, whatever this might be. But why? When you think about it, God, spirit, the love intelligence that creates the entire universe that's everywhere and also within us is infinite in nature. And that means there is something within us that is of an infinite nature. People like to be pessimistic. Boy, have I seen pessimism grow in the last couple of years. It's easy to be pessimistic, isn't it? Come on, tell the truth. It's easy to be a pessimist. It really requires very little of us, you know? You know, aren't I special? I can see what's wrong in a situation. Uh, but yes, many of us are skeptical, I understand. We have been disappointed. Some are skeptical because we've been let down. Some are skeptical because they've been hurt. But it's not where I want to live my life from. I know we have all been through those things, but we don't want those experiences, those negativities, those temporary experiences to be what become the foundation of our life going forward. Skeptics are trying to protect themselves. I realize that. They're fearful. Well, I get that too. So, so can I convert my past experiences, you know, the letdowns, the disappointments, the pains, into some kind of drive that makes me move forward? 
So years ago when I was in school, I was a little kid, and um, one day I had a teacher who just, you know, I'm sure now looking back at it, she was just having a really bad day, a really bad day. And, um, and she seemed to be going for world domination through humiliation of little kids, was, was what it seemed like to me. And, um, and she said some horrible, horrible things, you know, because she, I just, now, again, I have this 2020 uh, in hindsight that, you know, the poor woman was probably having a bad day. We were probably just an incorrigible class of kids. And uh, so anyway, she just lit into me one day and told me how I was never going to amount to anything and what an awful kid I was. And, and I heard that. But. I was also the kind of kid that on the inside I was going, oh yeah? Watch me. I'm going to show you. And so actually, I think that that experience served me in kind of a kooky way because somebody telling me I wasn't going to be something gave me the impetus to prove them wrong. You know? And I liked that. I liked proving. And, and you know, I have to say now it's been Oh, I'm embarrassed, more than 50 years, and I still remember that experience. And you know, now the difference is, when I think of her, I pray for her. Whereas the first many years, I was kind of cursing her, honestly. Oh, that awful woman, she's just out there damaging children and blah, 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 and all this kind of stuff, you know? And then I realized, no, there was, there was something there for me. Like, like Patrick was talking about in Harrison, there was, there was a gift in there for me. There was something there for me that I had to cultivate the eyes to see. So I get it. If we're skeptical, it's because we're trying to protect ourselves. We don't want to get hurt anymore. It's fear. But all of my past, all of my past, you know, it talks about in the Bible how someone can intend something for our bad, but God can take it and use it for our good. And I love that. I find that to be an extraordinarily empowering thing. So I can use my past experiences and turn them into a drive to become a better version of myself. Absolutely. And I think we should all decide that that's something we can do. Because we have an infinite capacity to heal. In the science of mind, each and every individual, because we are filled with God, has an infinite capacity to grow, to be more than we've ever been before, to change, and to make better choices for ourselves in the world we live in. So Ernest Holmes says it like this in our textbook. He says, principle is not bound by precedent. And what he means by that is that your future is not bound by your past, no matter how much you've told yourself it is. Oh, well, this is the way it's always gone for me. This must be what it's going to be like going forward. Well, no, not necessarily. I was talking with someone recently, and they were telling me their, their tale, and they were certainly going through some difficult things. But what I could see that was so challenging is they had such a commitment to their story of why it was difficult, there was not a lot of room to open up and allow God to work. You know, that, that, that we have to be willing to say, you know, all right, well, I've been doing it my way, and clearly that has not worked so well. So what if I open up to God's way? What's God's way? Well, I don't know what that will be for you. It will certainly be different for you than it is for me, because we're all individual expressions of the one. So for me, I think that the belief in scarcity, that there is not enough, stops many of us. That's it, right there. The belief in scarcity. You say, well, everyone can't have a life where they're doing what they like. Well, why not? Well, I, I should just be happy with what is. Really? Why? Why should you be happy with what is? And yes, I think I'm happy with what is, but I also know that because God is infinite, there's more out there. So. God experiences God's self by means of us saying yes to a greater expression of life. That's how God experiences life and love and joy and creativity, by us saying yes to those things. So historically, I think I have been a wanting person. Um, for many, many years, it was always about more and better and different, and I'm embarrassed to say that. Um, but I have noticed that I have shifted away from wanting outer things to wanting experiences, mm -hmm. I, to wanting more to have a quality of life. Um, 
Do you know what I mean by that? So, it's so, I, so I think rather than physical things, now it becomes about the, the energetic. You know, the energy that we share together, or the energy that I share with other people out in the world that I love to be with and that I care about. In, in this regard, I think um, about my being a wanting person. I think the internet has been very, very helpful for me. Because at first, when I had access to everything on the internet, I wanted and bought everything on the internet. I did. Um, and then I thought, well, there has to be uh, uh, something better than this. Um, and so what I started to do, once I realized I had everything in the universe and I didn't need it in triplicate, um, that I'd put things in my shopping cart and I would visit the shopping carts regularly. <laughs> and what I noticed was I'd look at my cart and I'd say, wow, you know, here are all these items. I don't really need any of this. Isn't it funny that I thought that was going to make me happy, that somehow I thought this was going to make a difference or add something to my life. And I will say that probably 95% of the time now, I just let that cart expire. You know, the items eventually disappear, I don't want them anymore, and I move on. So that, for me, has actually been a good, a good thing. Um, and I will continue to shop on the internet, of course. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, to ask, do I really want this? Most often not. Um, I've learned in some cases the reason I want something is the pleasure I think I will have from having it, right? And so in my path, food uh, used to really do this for me. It still does. Um, I would eat to feel different than the way I was feeling. I didn't know I was doing that at the time. But I realized in hindsight that I would often eat because I didn't like the way I was feeling or I wanted to change the way I was feeling. And it usually did not work, <laughs> at least not for very long in my case. Um, I mostly just felt bad after. Uh, and to feel better, I would eat more. So you would just see where that would go. So what I wanted is to change what I'm feeling. And so now if I look at that really, it's like, oh, well, I'm feeling this way. Hmm, what can I do to feel differently? But before I want to feel differently, I say, why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? What is it I'm saying to myself? How am I talking to myself? What is it I'm believing in right now that's contributing to me feeling this way? Hmm, okay. All right, what I want to change is the way I feel. Now, if I don't decide, if I don't direct consciously for myself, you know, uh, how I want to feel, then I'm going to be influenced in how I feel from everything outside of me, from the environment, people, the world around me. So, in the Psalms, it says, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So we decide that it's going to be a great day, mm -hmm. regardless of circumstances. And I know sometimes we get up in the morning and we have a really difficult day ahead. How, oh, this is a really difficult day. It's a painful day. Oh, it's an awful day. I hate today. I wish today would be over. Decide. We could decide that even though there are some difficult things ahead, this is going to be a really great day because the truth is I do not know all that God has contained in the day ahead for me. I just don't know. You know, circumstances, well, circumstances come and circumstances go. Um, I've heard the number one way to change your life is to change your standards. Now, that was an interesting thought to me because it's such an external thing. And I've really approached looking at changing my life from an internal process. But maybe, maybe it's a little of both, changing my standard. If I raise my standard, well, I would say, well, what is, what is essential for me? I know we all have lots of shoulds, right? Everybody's got should, should, should. I should do this. I should do that. I should be this. I should be that, all that. But what is absolutely essential? And I think you have to get specific. You have to get specific, because if you don't have a target, how will we ever know? It's hard to mobilize the forces of the universe, you know, the law of mind, if I don't have a target. And, you know, again, I have to remind us always that God has no judgment on anything that you want to experience in your life, anything you want to have, anything you want to do. God has no judgment on that. So I've decided, you know, what I do now is I ask some questions. I get specific about what I want, and then I start asking questions. Questions like, well, the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. So this is what got me going on this. All right, so what can, what is it that I need to know here? What consciousness do I need to become for the greater good to emerge in my life? 
how did I get to where I am right now? What was my thinking that got me to here today? And what must I be to experience what I, what must I be to experience what I desire? What kind of consciousness? Now, Ernest Holmes says in our textbook, you can have whatever you become in consciousness. So that means what we become on the inside, not who we are on the outside, but what we become on the inside. So obviously there are lots of things in life that we don't enjoy, but we could if we decided to. So having moved a while back, now I don't have a big yard anymore, I just have like this little courtyard where I live. And, um, I, uh, and so of course there are trees all around my courtyard and leaves fall all the time. And I am that type of person, whatever that person is, where I like there to be no leaves in my little courtyard. <laughs> and so um, early on, I was out, uh, when, I, when we first moved, I was out sweeping the courtyard and, um, and I noticed I was kind of pessimistic about the process. <laughs> and I thought, oh, this is not gonna go well for me because I'm gonna probably sweep this courtyard every day as long as I live here. Why don't I just turn that around? And, and it was that simple. It's like sweeping the courtyard is gonna become a spiritual practice for me. That what I'm doing is I'm creating order in my life. Order is heaven's first law. So one of the ways I get to experience more heaven in my life is by creating a little more order. And so I don't have to sweep the little patio. I get to sweep the patio. Yeah, I get to because, you know, I even actually live in a place where I have a little patio. Aren't I grateful for that? Well, yes, I am. You know, so just that little switch changed it into a, from being a chore that I didn't want to do to it's actually like a little spiritual practice for me. So I'm out there picking leaves off of plants and pulling weeds and sweeping and all that stuff. And I get to enjoy all of it. I get to because I choose to. I don't want this to be something that I dread. I want this to be something that, I, I want the, universe, the, the message I give to the universe is that I love living here and therefore I love all that I need to do for this to take place. Does that make sense at all? Um, so Ernest says you can have whatever you become in consciousness. So I think, you know, we all, but the science of mind teaches us we all have everything we need already inside of us. Right? So right now, to increase the qualities of God in my life, I first start by asking, what qualities of God am I committed to today? So I'm committed to the quality of God that is love. I'm committed to the quality of God that is abundance. I'm committed to the quality of God that is health and wholeness. Those things. So you get to answer that for yourself. Now, what will it take? What must I do in my beliefs? Where must my emotions be on the scale? What do, I have to be, what do I have to be focusing on? And what do I have to be telling myself pretty much all the time? See, what, and also I think it's interesting, what must I create to experience that greater good? Right? Science of mind says, I choose what I think. I choose what I feel. That's what our teaching is. So if I don't do it consciously, I'm going to pay a price. You know, not choosing is also a choice. I think we all recognize that. But the, because if I don't choose, the environment in which I live will make the choice for me. The environment being the people, the circumstances, everything around me. People have a lot of concern about their futures. I certainly understand that. You know, what something means, though, has the meaning we give it. So people see something happen in the outside world and they go, this means, this means. <clears throat> I don't really think that anything has any meaning except the meaning that you and I individually assign to those things. We want to be so anchored in, now hear this, we want to be so anchored in the goodness of God. I believe with all my heart and soul in the goodness of God. God loves us. God loves to give to us. We have to be gracious receivers. If we're not receiving, it's got to be something in us that's off a little bit. I don't know what that is. It might be your thinking. It might be that you think it needs to look a certain way or it has to come from a certain way or a certain person or something like that. But I believe that there's something that will empower us out of every situation. We just have to have the eyes to see. Like it says, seek and you shall find. Let's pray. So we turn our, thank you.
We'll just turn our attention inward for a minute to remember that right here, the place whereon we stand is holy ground. That we are surrounded, we are filled with God's infinite loving goodness. That that presence of God that's everywhere and within us is the most true, real thing about each and every one of us. We are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. And in this awareness of our oneness with God, I further know that we are all connected with each other. And I know for each and every one of us today that great healing is taking place in our life, that out of an awareness of our oneness with God, all good things unfold in our life, that there is no withhold in the divine consciousness. God never says, no, I don't have it for you. I know that God has it for each and every one of us. And we have the heart and mind and consciousness to graciously receive and express what God gives through us. So we include in our prayer today all of those things in our life that we think this could be a little better, this could be improved, this could be healed. And we place them on the altar of consciousness within our own heart, knowing that with God all things are possible. I absolutely know that this is the truth for each and every one of us. I know we are guided and directed by that presence of infinite spirit within. It reveals to us exactly what we need to know and do and be every moment of the day. And so now we speak our word for the world that we live in, letting our prayer emanate out from this sanctuary, first touching all people everywhere. No one exempted from this prayer. We let it encompass the globe, encompass all the things we have concern of, and we affirm here and now that the God that we believe in is bigger than all of it. And that with God, again, all things are possible. We include our family members and friends, parents and children, all of those we love and hold near and dear. Seeing them in our mind's eye, we surround them with an energy of light and love and healing and wholeness and know for them also that their prayers are answered. We bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I know we are blessed by being together, that there is a raising up for each of us, and we welcome it. So with a full heart, I say thank you, God. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful for all that I have I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful I am so blessed all right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. Com. Thank you, thank you. And thank you to our musicians, Sam and Karen, <laughs> as always. So, ways that you can make donations. Call the office at 818-762-7566. Go to nhcrs.org forward slash give, or text the word give to area code 818-457. 3419. Also, if you shop 
Amazon Smile and select Our Church. You'll find us under Church of Religious Science North Hollywood as the charity of your choice. Then whatever items you have in your shopping cart that you decide to keep, <laughs> that you really want, <laughs> when you purchase them, we get a donation at no cost to you. <laughs> so prayer with a practitioner is available after service uh, in the front of the sanctuary or on Zoom. You can also email prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org. Or for those of you here today, you can uh, put a prayer request in the prayer, re prayer request boxes that are in the foyer. Uh, you can also call in a prayer request to the church office, option four, or choose option three for our dial a prayer, pre-recorded prayer. Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney. That's this Wednesday, November 10th. Meditation starts at 6.50 p.m., service at 7. And Rev. Sidney's topic this week is speaking your word for radiant health and wholeness. I know I'm going to be there. <laughs> Youth church is open uh, on Sundays at 9.45 for a service. We welcome youth of all ages, and we're currently meeting outside on the church lawn. Our women's group meets today at 11.30 a.m. in person or on Zoom. And our guest speaker, or the guest speaker, is going to be practitioner Mary Catherine O'Hart. And she'll lead the group through a fun, interactive, quick workshop that will leave everyone looking forward to the holidays with delightful anticipation. All women are welcome. Christmas tree giving event. So this is our opportunity to help make a child's Christmas a joyful one. So once again, uh, we've adopted the children at the North Valley Caring Services. And practitioner Gail Pollott is on the patio today uh, to distribute names and gift ideas. Or you can also find her contact information on our website. Gail will also, she's got her tablet with her uh, so she'll be on Zoom. So those of you who are on Zoom can also speak to her for, to learn more about the program and select uh, children to give gifts to. We ask that all gifts uh, are delivered unwrapped to the church with an appropriate size gift bag by November 28th. The gift distribution will be on December 9th. You, Food, and God, Part 2, Workshop with Reverend Nadine, that's this coming Saturday, November 13th, from 10 a.m. Uh, to 12 p.m. It's in person or on Zoom, and all are welcome. So this is part two of the workshop she gave uh, a couple of months back. We invite you to join Reverend Nadine and world-renowned transformational coach Tara Packer for this incredible workshop. Tara works uh, somatically, meaning you know, with the mind-body connection and utilizes a variety of techniques, including EFT, tapping, to initiate a quicker process with emotional detoxing. Prior to the workshop, please read the book, Women, Food, and God, and keep a daily food journal. Cost is $30. Please don't be thrown off by the title, Women, Food, and God. It's open to everyone. Our bookstore is open for 30 minutes after service every Sunday. Please stop by. And our Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services to stay connected with the congregation. And our Zoom meditation continues every morning, Monday through Saturday at 8 AM. And so for information about all that's going on here, visit our website, nhcrs.org, where you can also sign up for weekly blasts and monthly newsletters. And with that, and again, another thank you to Patrick Harrison and our beautiful Sadie <laughs> for being with us this morning. Let's stand and join in the peace song. <laughs>
So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.